Thanks for staying with us. Now, according to the Debt Management Office, as at March 31st, 2020, the total borrowing by Nigeria from China was 3.121 billion US dollars. Now, this amount represents only 3.94% of Nigeria's total public debt of about 79.303 billion US dollars. Now, similarly, in terms of external sources of fund, China from, uh, from uh, of sources of funds, loans from China accounted for 11.28% of the external debt stock of um, about 27.67 billion. I have too many billions in my mouth. Now, this data shows that China is not a major source of funding for Nigerian, for the Nigerian government. However, the majority of Nigerian populace believes that China is about to take over the country and there are fears of us losing our sovereignty. Now, if you share the same sentiments, let's hear what you have to say. Remember to join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Your Africa One with the hashtag Waste, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Who is afraid of this China loan fest? Well, I know you are afraid. No, yeah, it's you. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not part I'm, of you. I, I am so afraid. Why of are you afraid basically. of the loan? Because we uh, in China, uh, what's it called? Um, Nigerians or the political class currently have not done what they're supposed to do. The you think they don't have the energy to manage? Not, not even the energy. They don't want to manage it because they don't have what it takes to do it. Because we have a situation whereby the government has mortgaged us as individuals or as a nation to um, China. The, the terms of um, the loans are not being um, clear. And at the same time, the government, I was in the um, Minister of um, Inter um, Transport, mm -hmm. Amechi, said something that we, he's warning against the um, probe of China loans. So I think it is totally, it is totally okay for us to say we are scared. <laughs> okay, Uti, do you agree that you share the same sentiment? I'm not, I'm not scared of China and the loans. I'm mm. scared of our politicians and the management of the loans. So mm. like you said, mm. any probe in Nigeria, we've just seen one. People will faint, no? Any Exactly. Mm. So, it, you know, any probe in Nigeria will mm. ruffle feathers. People will be concerned about what will come to the fore. Because there is so much mismanagement, because I don't, I, I told myself I wasn't going to use corruption in this show, but really, because of the gaps in our processes and the lapses, right? I don't even think that these loan agreements are not clear. Mm. It is these same lapses and this same greed and sense of self that says, I need this to pass through quickly so the money comes in, then we can begin the misappropriation. Mm -hmm. So I'm not scared of the loans, because like I said, strategic borrowing you are going to need to develop. We carry too much debt in Nigeria. And I, I like the intro that you gave us that shows that China is not even where to focus. Mm -mm. We are servicing a lot of debt. We are mm -hmm. servicing, I mean, we don't even want to talk about what's happening in terms of our internal debt and t bills and all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are servicing and carrying a lot of debt. And this debt is on recurring expenditure. Mm. If you are able to take, for instance, a loan and build a railway line, and the return on investment on that railway line covers the loan because it is properly managed. You are creating jobs. You've brought in expertise. And you're generating income. Exactly. So the reality is not, we're chasing the greatest trick the devil pulled. It doesn't exist. Mm. We're chasing shadows mm -hmm. when we tell ourselves that the Chinese and their money are our problem. Our problem. Thank you. Know, you. There are some okay. things Temi Tokwe said. She said something about the the if you have if you have to manage money that you have to have the four c's and the four c's are being creative mm -hmm. being conservative being consistent and also being careful the nigerian political class are neither of these mm -hmm. so i don't think we should well, sleep with our with we shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> negatively well, well creativity is creativity well I, I i just wanted to look at it from that principle whatever happened to that principle that says start with what you have you know mm -hmm. why are we not you know going and looking inward why do we have to look at the loans but i agree with you that we need to strategically borrow 
you know, but I that's that's my opinion. But we, let me bring in our first guest. <laughs> Start with what you have. <laughs> Told it. Nigerians will complain. Yeah. So let me let me let me bring in our guest now. Mustafa Yusuf Adebola is a risk consultant and anti-fraud specialist with experience in fraud investigations internal audit, risk management, business and financial analyst. He is the CEO of Provisio Professional Services, a consulting firm that offers consulting training and data analytics services through which he contributes to the social development of Nigeria with his expertise. Now, thank you so much for joining us, Mustafa. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so <laughs> we are happy to have you this evening. So you are a risk manage, manager, Abby, that's the word. You know, um, <laughs> when you looked at the document that's, that, is, um, that, um, that is circulating, that was released yeah. by the Debt Management Office about the China loan, right, that we signed with, uh, with Nigeria, what, what did you, I mean, what did you see there? Is, you know, are there a huge risk or is this something that we could manage? Maybe we should start with that. <laughs> okay. So first of all, um, thank you very much for having me. Um, for the Nigeria-China loan, what I seem to observe um, has been, will I say, so much anxiety and so much, um, will I say, I, it's, 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 a, it's a future of um, several years of distrust. So the relationship between Nigeria and or the Nigerian government and the people is what we are seeing here, whereby we don't seem to trust what our leaders say or what the government says. Now, for the loan itself, I would have to say, I know I didn't get the, well, the original source documents, but I saw some of what the DMO had on their, um, on their website. And from what you can see, like you said earlier, Chinese loans or the loans from China, if we could call it that, only accounts for about 11.28% of our external debts. And if you go back to history, we have to realize that you mentioned something at the beginning whereby you were mentioning the quote of the day. There is a saying in Nigeria where we say, uh, borrow, borrow, make me rich. Mm -hmm. So the question you should be asking yourself is, when you borrow, you actually have that intention of being able to pay back. And once you pay back, what you are trying to do in that instance is making sure you borrow that money for future use so that you can actually pay both the money you, the money you borrowed and both, well, I say, the interest that is charged on it. So in this situation, Nigeria has actually been trading with China since 1971, where we had like our first, um, well, I say, bilateral uh, agreement. agreement. And and the one that is actually making so much rounds in the news now is the um, 11, the loans that we actually um, borrowed for like 11 projects. And I remember you had um, the Minister of Works and Transport, no, Minister and of Works and Housing, yes, yeah, some weeks ago, some months ago. And he was telling you something whereby he was saying that you need infrastructure. This government is actually very much concerned about infrastructure. And you need to ask yourself these questions. I'm, I guess this is probably like the bigger picture or the big questions for us to ask. Most times when the government officials are going for campaign, they always say, we are going to build this, we are going to do this, we are going to do that. We do not always ask them this question, how do you intend to do this? So in this instance, this government has actually taken the, uh, the step to make sure that probably they have a vision for infrastructure development and they need money to do it. If they increase taxes, you are going to complain, like you mentioned nine post earlier. Yeah. If they so basically they have to look at sources of finance, they have internal sources, they have external sources. Now what China does is like a win-win. China is not coming to play in Africa, basically. China needs a uh, oil for infrastructure. So it's almost like we are trading infrastructure for oil, whereby they want to help us build a lot of um, infrastructural projects or complete a lot of infrastructural projects for certain, um, let's say, benefits such as oil and gas and manufacturing and, and so much like that. So now when we look at this, uh, what I see for me, if I look at the data, I think, I really don't think I have a problem with it, honestly speaking, because I see about 11 projects being so listed. So you don't see any risk involved because you're, you're, what, you're, what I hear you say is that you're, you're seeing that it's a good thing that we're taking these loans from the bank. All right, let me come to Isi. Mm. Do you have a question for Absolutely, or? absolutely. So is it is it too late? If we it seems you don't see anything wrong with the loans being taken, do you think it is okay for us to actually um, restructure the loans? And if we have to restructure okay, the loans, I, I, how I won't say I don't see anything wrong with the loans because normally when it comes to finance, you need to actually borrow. So loans are usually like a normal time when it comes to finance. However, like I think I hear you say from the question, basically what we want is 
can you afford to repay these loans? And I am sensing this negativity from Nigeria, whereby it's like, we've already assumed that we're not going to pay back these loans. And I, sometimes I don't blame Nigerians, because we, if you look at the exchange rate, I was looking at the data from CBN, the exchange rate to, for August 21 today is about 200 and, uh, I think 276. This time last year, I think it was 209. And in 2012, it's about $155, um, dollars, uh, 900 to a dollar. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell you? You're asking, you borrowed money at a certain exchange rate. Mm -hmm. So in the next 20 to 30 years, when it's going to be repaid, do you have enough Naira or cash to repay them? Mm -hmm. Now, going just straight to your question, when you say restructure, I think that's almost like the last, the last end. You're actually going to borrow money with the intention of paying back. And when I read statements by DMO, they keep on emphasizing that fact that we are going to pay back this um, loan. So I feel the question we should be asking, which I actually somehow see um, the uh, say, um, National Assembly doing, is what are the plans to make sure that we can repay these loans? And now, when you look at these projects, are they going to are actually assets? So an asset is meant to actually generate future economic More benefits income, yeah. so that you can actually make money from it. So are we sure that when they build the light rail, when they have the hydroelectric electric power projects and so many projects that listed there, are we sure that it can generate enough money for us to pay back? Because it's not just about building mm -hmm. a lot of infrastructure. It's about making sure that they work and they service the people. It's about making sure, for instance, you can trade with someone that's in Zamfara State. You have a farm here. You make sure you can, you can, you can ship or you can transport cargo from one location to the other. So basically, it's about make, ensuring that the economy itself, there is a stimulant to make sure that so money is flowing. Mm -hmm. And once money is flowing, we can easily pay back these loans. Yeah. However, if we already have this mindset of, we have the default mindset that we are not going to pay back, then it shows somehow to the credibility of, uh, will I say, the borrower. Okay. That's, the way I see that, that's the way I see that position. I think one, one, one of the factors that seems to be, um, will I say, affecting our mindset basically is whereby we are concerned about what China has done in Africa, not really about Nigeria, because we've seen the way they've dealt with Other African different countries. countries and countries that actually did not um, pay back their um, loans that they borrowed. However, in this instance, what I'm seeing in this instance is they have something to offer. Mm -hmm. Are we making sure that there is technology transfer? Mm -hmm. Are we making sure there is human capacity development? Mm -hmm. Are we making sure that we have something to gain? If you recall, there was a time during this COVID, okay, we, still, we are still in COVID anyway, but there was a time the Minister of Transportation was saying something about the Chinese workers are not coming to Nigeria and it's going to cause some delay on some of the projects. That's what we, that's what we should actually be looking at because what that means is you've borrowed money, they are charging interest on it. So the and money so is going. So if you make sure, sure you have to make sure that those projects, they're actually completed. Those projects to finish them. Okay, all right, so I, I, I thank you for that. Let me quickly introduce our second guest, then Uti would, um, would go. Uh, Motur Moturayo Adefamoti is the CEO of Money Stewards, an investment firm with locations in Lagos, Atlanta, Houston, Kenya, and London. As CEO, she leads a team of wealth management executives with expertise in diverse foreign investment portfolios. We are more than happy to host her again because this is our second time on the show. Welcome, Mo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, I think Uti, I'll, I'll give Uti the, um, the floor. So I actually had a question um, for the previous guest, and maybe I will pose it to, to, to you. Um, we've talked about credibility and the credibility of the borrower. So when we borrow, when we talk about risk, um, the credit risk element of a borrowing arrangement. Now, why, and I think that's the question for me, is the first question is, why is Nigeria looking to borrow from China? There are global organizations, financial organizations, the World Bank, the African Development Bank. Why can't we borrow from these, um, these organizations? I, I hazard a guess as to say these organizations have tighter reins, and China has a long game, has a long strategy when we talk about um, what they have done in Africa. So, it, what I would like to hear the views as to one, why we're not viable or credible to these organizations, and two, why um, we are having to go to China, because that's where the concern is coming from in terms of how they may be looking to get a foothold in Africa. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be back. Thank you, everyone, for inviting me. All right, so to answer your question, I think the first thing you have to understand is um, in order to borrow uh, money, the lender also has to be willing to give. Chinese traditionally uh, have 
uh, giving Africans quite a lot of loans. And I think on the surface of it, um, definitely, you know, you're, you're looking at a country that needs to expand its infrastructure, provide jobs and uh, commerce and economic development and all of those great stuff. So we have no choice because funds are not much coming, are not really coming from taxes because the collection and remittance is an issue. Uh, um, and then so you look towards um, getting these loans and Chinese loans are easily available. So if you look at the terms of the loans uh, for, for Nigeria and a lot of the African countries, you know, uh, the, terms, the terms of the loans in Nigeria, they've given us a 20-year tenor, which is attractive, a 2.5% uh, annual rate, which is attractive, um, a seven-year moratorium again, which is attractive. So on the surface of it, it seems quite interesting and um, and you know, great to access, but it's like onions, when you begin to peel the layers, you begin to see what is behind it, and it becomes, uh, becomes a bit more interesting. Um, China has an initiative called Belt Road um, Initiative, the BRI, and was established in 2013 by uh, President Xi. And it's very interesting, and I think that we should all take time to read it, because the crux of the uh, initiative is to, to provide network of um, Chinese infrastructure projects linking Europe, uh, Asia, and Africa. And it's basically to expand the political power and, and uh, the military base and access to intelligence to a lot of these countries. So that is one of the reasons. And it's a very ambitious project. And of course, they've made funds easily accessible. A lot of all those um, uh, other as you mentioned about accessing loans, they're very, very difficult because, you know, typically our economic indices um, do not uh, make us attractive or qualify for those loans. So mm -hmm. definitely, I think the next thing we look at is China, China loans. And um, unfortunately, some of these loans come with very aggressive features, features such as number one, uh, it has to, the infrastructure has to be completely developed by the Chinese companies themselves. The maintenance has to be developed by the Chinese people. And, and of course, uh, the juicy part of it is when you don't pay the loans and, and then they seek to take not just the, the infrastructure they're building, but also seaports. So you wonder why the seaport is so interesting to the Chinese people. 90% of, uh, of African export is based on the seaport. And China currently controls 46 of those seaports in sub-Saharan Africa. They're either financing it or they are uh, providing some sort of funding or some construction on it or some maintenance on it. So from China's global power, which is a, a threat to the U.S., uh, it, it is part of the BRR initiative to, to access um, this loan. Look at um, um, Djibouti, for instance. Uh, 80% of their GDP uh, is, is, you know, is based on Chinese loans. And what has happened? They couldn't pay this loan. So naturally, the Chinese people decided to uh, provide a military base in there. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, Kenya is, so, is, is struggling with their uh, payments of re repayment of the Chinese loan. So the very attractive Mombasa seaport uh, is on the eyes, is right in the eyes of the Chinese people. Venezuela, uh, you know, the income um, from the oil is right right up the alley of the Chinese people. And you look at a country like Zambia, they're literally taking over or um, the airports, the media, and the state on electric power. So, I mean, this China, one could say uh, that maybe these Chinese loans are not particularly designed to be paid off, and in which case the, you know, the collateral is not just the infrastructure, uh, uh, but also the, the seaport, which in the last, you know, decade or so, they've been quite interested in it, and you know, see a lot of these African country um, leaders gallivanting towards the Chinese loan. So, uh, in my opinion, I think that that's for some of the attractiveness of the Chinese uh, of the Chinese loan from the Chinese point of view. Because otherwise, why is this? Are this some of this loan so easy to access with such well, low the truth interest is, you rate? Well, wouldn't blame them. Certainly, they want to protect their 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 money. So, if they put all this. Um, rigid, um, what's it called? Conditions. Conditions, and you you still go ahead and you you sign and you take the loan. It means you haven't done your homework. But I want to go on a very short break. We'll be right back because I wanted us to talk about the strategy, even in borrowing. When you know that your income is not commensurate to the amount you're borrowing, how do you? What kind of strategy should you adopt in borrowing? We'll take a short break. Very short break. We'll be right back.